Hey guys, it's Mishi here and today I'd like to talk about a very, very serious topic um, in relation to BPD and one that is obviously very hard to talk about, um, but yet it is obviously it's a very sensitive topic, but I feel like it needs to be discussed because a lot of us do suffer from it and that is self-harm. Now it is one of the core criteria um, to having borderline personality disorder and a lot of people that don't have borderline personality disorder also suffer from self-harm. Um, not to get too personal into it, but I have suffered from self-harming in the past. And a lot of people have asked me, um, you know, like neurotypical people, they ask me why, like, why would you do this to yourself? And I think that's a question that a lot of people have um, for those of us who, who have self-harm, which I guess it is very hard to, to understand from their point of view because as humans, we are, you know, we're trying to live our life with, without harm. You know, we're always trying to be safe and, and be happy. So it doesn't make sense that, that we would inflict that harm and that pain um, like upon ourselves. Um, now this, this is just for self-harm um, that's not related to suicide. Um, maybe I'll talk about suicide in another video. Um, but suicide and self-harm are not, you know, they go hand in hand sometimes, but someone that self-harms self is not always trying to end their life. There's many reasons why someone would self-harm. Um, the first reason is because they are so trapped in their own head, they're feeling so much, um, they feel like they're going to explode with all the emotions and sometimes, you know, instead of lashing out on someone else or, or you know, sometimes that seems like the best thing to do in order to get out that pain is just doing it to yourself. And it's also sometimes a good distraction, not that it's a good distraction at all, but you know, in our heads, that's what it seems like. Um, sometimes a reasonable distraction, like you're so focused on the pain that you're feeling inside your head. Um, once you, you know, give yourself that physical pain, um, it distracts you even for a moment or two. Um, it feels, it seems like it's worth it at that point in time, just to escape the torture inside your head. Another reason that people choose to do it is because they feel the opposite. They feel absolutely nothing. They feel numb. They've just completely shut down and they long to feel anything, anything at all. Um, so sometimes that this, this physical pain can allow them to feel something because they've just gone so long um, without being able to, to love or to hate or, you know, feel angry or happy or sad. So this kind of releases that for them. Another reason is because, you know, you feel like you deserve it, like you're punishing yourself, um, which is so awful. Like, honestly, any form of self-harm, um, if someone is choosing to do this themselves, um, it's, it's so sad. And I feel like there sh definitely should be more um, support groups and, and therapy is not as readily available um, as it should be for this kind of thing because it is so much more common um, than a lot of people think. A lot of people think that people do it just for the attention. Now I know that there are obviously some cases where it is for attention. Um, you know, like if you, if you feel like no one is, is there for you, no one's caring for you, no one's showing you any love, you've, you've tried and reached out to people time and time again and they're ignoring you. Um, this feels like it's the only way to be able to show people like, look, I'm hurting, I'm suffering. And sometimes that's the only time that people will, you know, realize that, okay, this person needs help. But attention is not always the reason that people do it. Um, and many, many times, you know, it's, it's something that you hide and you don't talk about. I feel like that's most cases, you know, you cover it up with your sleeves or you wear bandages or you make excuses for it. Most of us, I feel like we become very, very embarrassed of it afterwards, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to do it. It just means that when we're in an episode again, you know, we're feeling down from doing it last time. We're embarrassed and we start to hate ourselves. So the cycle continues of the self-harm and there's many different ways a person can choose to um, inflict self-harm upon themselves. 
you know, obviously cutting oneself is the um, most widely known way of doing it, but there's also, you know, there's also burning yourself. Uh, there's dermatillomania, which means that you continuously pick at your skin and rehash old wounds. Um, there's trichotillomania, which means like you pull out your hair. Um, you can also, you know, bash your head. Um, there's, there's lots of different ways. So, um, when looking for that, you may not see it and someone may be very, very good at hiding it. Um, but that doesn't mean that, you know, it should be, it should never be encouraged. I think that it is so, 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 excuse my language, just fucked up when, you know, people are encouraging it or, or, or belittling someone for having self-harm scars. Um, I have heard it so many times in my past, you know, in high school and on the internet, people just bashing someone for having self-harm scars um, or for, for hurting yourself. And that's not going to make the person stop that is just going to further alienate that person and then they're going to want to do it again. So the cycle needs to be stopped in another way. You need to be reaching out to someone that is self-harming. You need to be supporting them, you know, showing them that there are other people like them that, you know, have recovered and it is a very, very long process. It does take a very long time. It is very hard and, you know, it could take years and, and many, many relapses, but it is possible. So again, BPD and self-harm, they, they correlate very well with each other. They're very, very strongly. When you find someone that has BPD, they probably have a history of self-harm in some form or another. Um, and, and a lot of us do still continue to do it even in small, in small amounts. Um, but that is also another reason why, um, we need to 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 seek to recover and and better ourselves and try and fight this all-consuming illness um so that's just a little bit about self-harm um again if you or someone you know is suffering um please please urge them or yourselves to get help um i can list some numbers down below um or even find some support groups online um if if you are not able to um, you know, go to therapy or something like that, because it is not as readily available as a lot of people think. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching, um, and, and take care.